Like for me as a kid, I watched a tiny bit of it on TV, but not much. Um, I, I I think it was part of it was, you know, like the stigma of being a young child. Like I didn't have a sister or anything. So there was no excuse, I guess, to watch Sailor Moon um, and none of my friends watched it. So I was like, oh, well, I don't, I, well, I'm interested, but also I'm embarrassed because I, I was, you know, as a young person, even into like middle school and early high school, I was deeply embarrassed about how much I liked Japanese animation. So really, this podcast is about toxic masculinity and uh, the stigma it has on young boys. I mean, kind of. Yeah. You know, like, like my favorite color when I was a little, little boy was pink and I got the pink Game Boy and I was made fun of for it. And yeah, that was always a big thing. I liked, you know, Hello Kitty and that sort of thing as a as a young man. And it was something where it was like, oh, no, you shouldn't do that. Be ashamed. Like my parents were supportive, my mom especially. But, you know, the, the Middle West writ large isn't great for it. Um, <laughs> and so Sailor Moon, like as I got older, I would kind of I would kind of try to watch it. But it was sort of the combination of trying to watch the dub, the Deke dub um, and being a bit self-serious about it and being a little embarrassed by it that I, I could just never really stick with it. Um, it wasn't until I um, found the the YouTube channel Sailor Moon Says, um, which <laughs> uploaded clips from the uh, the English dub. Um, usually, like, they would do a, a fair bit for them, too. Like, a proper color correct in, correction and that sort of thing um, from the sources and all that. And, you know, resyncing to the Blu-rays, that dub and everything. At first, it was just a funny thing where it's like, haha, this dub is not very good. Um, or, like, it's charmingly weird. But then I just started to grow this really unironic appreciation for it through watching those clips. Because I started getting into it when I was getting into art and animation school. And it's like, oh, wait, there's a lot of cool stuff here. The aesthetic is gorgeous and it's got so much interesting stuff going on. And even the vocal performances are so like loose and fun in their way that I can't help but appreciate those, even if the adaptation is more where the issues lie. And then I you know, started watching the television series and I actually got to see this movie in theaters. A few years back, Fathom did uh, a double feature of Sailor Moon R the movie and Sailor Moon S the movie. And then they did a separate screening of the uh, Sailor Moon Super S film. Um, and I got to see all three of those. Um, and this was before I'd really watched the series. And I, I really, really loved <laughs> Getting to see those on the big screen, especially. Mental void? I just slid my ticket across the table and I said, sorry guys, I gotta see about a girl. 